G'day and welcome back to the channel. Now, sadly, I don't have a lot of LiPo batteries. I've got a lot of quads, I've got a lot of planes. I don't have a lot of batteries. They are increasingly hard to get hold of in New Zealand. And when you can, they cost a fortune, which is why I use the China Hobby Line batteries, which have proven to be pretty damn good. But even then, I don't have a lot of them. And I'm getting a lot of smaller quads now. And so I've got batteries for five inch quads, 1300 four cells, and I got batteries for planes, but I've only got a few of these little batteries for mini quad or for the tiny quads, the three inch quads, and it's a bit of a problem. Well, it was a problem uh, because I've got something that'll help. Now, let me move these out of the way for a moment. Talk at RC, they've been doing a lot of cool stuff recently, and they've seen me. This is one of the little pocket chargers. I use one of these in my flight pack all the time, and you know, I've already reviewed the, the little uh, fast chargers here. This is the 400 watt one, fantastic 400 watts in a package that size, brilliant, absolutely fantastic. They've also done a whole lot of other stuff like the, the toolkit stuff with the um, servo testers and all that sort of stuff. So many good products, and they're all reasonably priced as well. And today, I'm going to be looking at this. It's a new product and it's upside down because we live in the Southern Hemisphere. Let me fix that for you Northern Hemisphere viewers. Um, this is the M6D and it's another charger. Oh man, I won't unbox it, but we'll take it out of the box. Ooh, nice. It takes ages for the air to get past. Come on, hurry up. Get going, get going. Just, there we go. There it is. It's another one of these chargers one of the and it's upside down again here we go another one of these little fast field chargers so why am i so excited about this one what's so different about between that and that well this one is a 500 watt version but more importantly more importantly is it's a dual charger see that it's got two xt60s and two balance port connectors one xt60 on the back for connecting up your power source whether it be uh, a simple lead like this with some crocodile clips to throw across your car battery uh, this doesn't come by the way this is an extra you've got to buy this yourself you don't the only leads you get with this is a usb lead for i think for maybe reprogramming i'm not sure but you don't get any leads with this so you have to provide your own leads now the beauty of this thing is that if i've only got a few batteries i think i've got four of these batteries here um, at the moment i go out i got four fully charged batteries i have four flights well i have three flights well, I have one flight and then I start recharging the, the battery that I've just flattened. But it takes, you know, even on a high C charge, which these handle quite well, even if I charge it at 5C, it still takes about 20 minutes to charge a battery because they pretty quickly get up to the top end and they start the charge rate tails off no matter what you set it to. So it means I still spend a lot of time sitting on the ground waiting for batteries to charge. Now this will change everything. This changes everything. Let me... Uh, let me demonstrate this for you so you can see what I'm talking about. For the purposes of this test, I'm going to power this from a 4S 5200 milliamp battery pack. It'll take anything up to 30 something volts, maybe more, I can't remember. It's all in the, I'll, I'll link in the description to the spec sheet for this because that's where you'll find it, all the details. No point in me telling you stuff you can look up yourself. So this simply plugs in the back and Woohoo, there we go, and you can hear it's got a fan. So let's take a closer look at the screen, we'll show you how it works. Here we go, so as you can see it is dual channel, we've got two channels. This little button here changes the active channel, you can see the little colour surround there. It enables you to select the channel, channel you're working on, so let's work on this channel. And you can see at the moment it's not got any voltage, no current, there's nothing on the cell voltages there. It tells us at the moment we've got 16.45 volts in with no current draw, um, that's from our four cell battery pack. I'm going, to I'm going to plug a battery in. I've got, uh, now these have an XT30, so I've had to put an adapter on to go to XT60. It's the only downside of not having things, but again, you'll have to do that. And we have um, these little balance port connectors here. You've got to remember which way they go, and it's negative to the left. So I plug it in like so. It pays to plug the balance port adapter in before you plug in the main lead, in my experience. Now, you see, automatically our cell voltages have appeared here. So this one does need a charge, 3.76 volts roughly. So I now plug in the, the main charge lead, like so, and we get our 15.06 volts appearing up here. Now, one thing I noticed when I was I did a first take of this video the other day, this lead here, this, this um, adapter lead is actually very light wires and it goes through a JST connector and there's quite a bit of voltage drop in this lead. So <laughs> this You'll see the effects of that voltage drop when we do the charging. Now I've got another battery here. Here's another one of these packs. Let's put this on the other channel and likewise see if we can get that to charge at the same time. And which way is negative, which way is positive. I can never remember which way it goes. Must go this way. There we go. Plug in the... Sorry I'm doing this a bit cockeyed but it's a bit hard to do. Plug in the balance connector and then plug in the main battery port here. 
There we go. So now we've got two channels operative. These batteries are in a similar state of charge. What I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to go through and let's, um, if I cycle through the current channel, you can see we're in standby. We've got our cell voltages and that's all we get. Standby cell voltages. Let's go to standby. Let's press the button and here we go. This is where we set it up. It's really simple. Uh, we've got battery. You can set a whole lot of defaults in here. I've just got one at the moment. So you might have, you might use this for charging your five inch quad batteries and your three inch quad batteries and some aircraft batteries. You can pre-program all that and so you have to fart around doing what I'm going to do now. So I'm just going to select that and then we have battery type at the top here which is LiPo obviously. Um, cell count. Auto seems to be very reliable. I'd leave it on auto, auto unless you have a battery that is really over discharged. Don't want to, um, you know, it might get the wrong cell count, but you can set it to whatever you like. Then we've got mode, there's charge, there's three modes. There's charge, discharge, and storage. So that's all you need. Charge is always a balanced charge, of course. End voltage, if you've got some 4.3 or 4.425 packs, you know, the high voltage packs, you can adjust the end voltage. Most of the time, just want to leave that at 4.2. And then you've got your charge current, and I'm going to charge these at 1 amp because I'm not in a hurry and it'll give me more time to talk about it. There we go. One amp. So now I can just go down here to start and it'll say, yep, charge it to 16.8 volts. And away we go. There we go, charging. You can see the current there. I've set it to one amp, so it's, it's close enough to one amp. And there's the terminal voltage. And while this is happening, we've got all the parameters here. We've got charging, four cell lithium polymer, and 4.2 volts per cell at one amp. But we can still step through. We can see there's our uh, individual cell voltages and you can see that as it's switching around basically I don't know maybe it's I think it's balancing I don't know what it's doing there or showing the high cells I haven't read the manual it's so easy I didn't need to read the manual that's fantastic and I think if you go again it gives you the uh, internal resistance of the cells but not straight away it seems to take some time before it there we go here we go so that's the internal resistance of the battery 17 milliohms to 15 or 15 to 17 milliohms it's not too bad for a little tiny battery like that so now we can do the other channel we just step over there we go through the process Again, press the button, uh, and it's remembered from that channel. So we've got one amp charge. Let's go through. There we go. Everything is there. Auto charge, one amp, and start. Yes, okay. And now we've got both channels charging. Brilliant. I'm charging two batteries at once. It means I'll get more flying in. I don't have to wait so long. And up the top here, it's telling us that our supply voltage has dropped down to 16.3 because we've got a load on it, and it's drawing about two amps out of the... 4S battery, which is about right, which is 0.3 watt hours. And there's a the temperature here, 19.9 degrees. Now, the fan, it's got a fan in it. The fan kicks in at about 45 degrees, which is good. It doesn't kick in too early because otherwise it just makes noise. But once the fan kicks in, it really does keep it at that or below 45 degrees C, which is excellent. So I'll just check and see what the internal resistance of this battery here is. There we go, cells coming up. And again, it'll probably, there we go. So this one is a little bit better condition than the other one. This is 16 milliohms. This is 14 milliohms. I think I've probably thrashed this one a little bit too hard. But there we go. Simple as that. That's it. You're charging two batteries at once at the field while you're flying your other batteries. That's brilliant. I love it. This is going to mean I get so much more flight time with a limited number of batteries. And what's not to like? Um, yeah, excellent. If there's anything that I'd like, maybe it would be having a, an OLED display rather than an LCD because I'm not sure how this is going to perform in bright sunlight. LCDs tend to, colour LCDs don't tend to perform that well in bright sunlight. At the moment, it's winter here. We don't have any bright sunlight. It's all been sent over to Australia for the winter. We don't get it here. It's in very short supply, quarantined. Um, so there you go. That's it. What more can I say? There's nothing else to say. It just charges until the battery's full and then away you go. And of course, you can use it to put your batteries on storage. Yeah, it comes with a very comprehensive manual which uh, you can spend all winter reading if you're in the southern hemisphere here's the manual for those of you who want to read it do, 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 do. that's it <laughs> that's honestly that's it. just a sheet of paper but as you can see i haven't actually uh, read the manual but it was easy enough to work out how to drive it and the key factors are it's 500 watts total so it's 250 watts per channel up to 15 amps per channel so as long as you've got enough big enough battery to drive it you can charge till the cows come home and it really does seem quite efficient it, it doesn't get warm certainly not charging these little batteries and i just love it it's fantastic i can spend more time flying which is really the whole goal of any piece of kit for your for your flight box you want it to be helping you fly as safely and as long as you can there we go that's it 
I think this is definitely a big thumbs up product. This is an excellent product for people like me who are lipo poor and model rich. Um, I just want to get more flying time in. So yeah, uh, thank you uh, Toolkit RC. It's Toolkit RC? Yes, Toolkit RC. Another excellent, another fine product from this range of little charges and accessory items that every modeler should have because they're just invaluable. There you go. Thanks for watching. Comments to the usual place. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. You make this all possible. If you've got questions, throw them in the comment bit. I'll do my best to answer them. And in the meantime, thanks for watching. Bye for now.